Power Creep, and you. Hey everyone, Derpy here, welcome back to another Battle Pirates video. Today I'm talking about Power Creep, something that can and has killed games, and how Kixai actively tries to avoid it. At the end, I'll also try and predict the future, so stay tuned for that. Jumping into it, what is Power Creep? There's also a really good 8 or minute video that someone else has made, it has like 4 million views, you could go watch if you find that interesting. I'll leave a link to it in the channel description, or the YouTube description. Power creep is when we get new content that is better than old content, and it forces out this older stuff in favor of much stronger, much better, much shinier, newer content. This happens in all games and can actually kill them. Basically, it's when we get new things that are strong. And the thing that most people may not originally realize, and I certainly didn't, is that power creep is not bad. Some power creep is good. You need to have prizes that are worth winning in a game that evolves naturally over time, but this needs to happen at a slow, controllable pace. This is probably one of the reasons why we have these PvE uh, silos now and raid cycles going forward that are very, very predictable. So some power creep is good and too much is bad. In the worst case scenario for power creep, we would find that every new ship will be 5 times as strong, 10 times as strong, 20 times as strong as the old ones in every single target, and we just get something with twice as many armor slots, twice as many weapons, twice as much armor points. It really just gets really, really insane out of control, and we mean the old things are completely useless. Nowadays, the old things can sort of work for one or two more cycles, but after that, they're really out of it. So you could make an argument where they're already, but I would actually argue that this is actually different and is more related to the goal case. This is actually what Kixai has pretty much achieved. It's where ships are slightly stronger in some targets, but have a different unique aspect, a different flavor, a different style that makes them stronger in the targets they are designed for. What do I mean? Well, let's get into some examples. Going over the assault line between tier 8.5 and tier 10, we have the Pegasus, the Zealot, the Photon ECM, and the Ravager. Actually, assault is not my favorite whole class in the game, so it's an interesting one to dive into. You can see I've listed the stats with the Pegasus. We have a missile ship, it's pretty slow, and you can customize it using CICs to add more speed or add more range and modify things around a little bit. In terms of the Zealot, we have a really short range scattergun hull, which is corrosive damage, and it's really, really fast, and has drones at X1, which was really quite interesting. Then the Photon ECM is another missile ship, long range penetrative damage, has a special stun ability, and applies lots of debuffs to the enemies through the uh, targeting accuracy aim hack UAV. Then of course the Ravager, the tier 10 one, is Scatterguns Corrosive, is a very very fast hole, and does lots of damage over time. Now of course, as you're looking at this, they get better than other ones, but they're not insanely out of control, and the armor point numbers are not triple the value every single, they're not four or five times the value every single half tier you go up. Why? Well, let's take a look at these targets. The picture on the right is of, the, of a Zealot target, and if you're designing this, you want to make sure the Zealot works really well in this one, but the ones on either side don't, so the Pegasus, half a tier below it, shouldn't work very well to force you, encourage you rather, to get the Zealot and build the Zealot. Then once you get half a tier above that, the Photon ECM, you need to make sure you're not having way too much power creep, so you're actually building a target that is designed both the half a tier below and half a tier above. You don't want the Zealot to be way better than, than the, either of them, but you don't want the Photon to be insane. The Photon shouldn't work too well on this target. Should it complete it? Yes. Should it do better when they're both X1? Sure. But should a U0 Photon ECM be better than an X1 Zealot fleet? No. Let's take a look at a few of the different categories, a few of the different things in this target that actually make it work. First of all, we have grouped buildings. This is something that splash damage is going to be really, really good against, which the Zealot has and the other two don't. We also have multiple small enemies, which again encourages splash damage. And we have debuff buildings. Again, all these things encourage splash damage. You can target one turret, hit all of them. It works pretty well. And pretty much everything here outranges you, or pretty much does, so there's no benefit to long range or short range. Those missile turrets are going to hit you if you're 100 range away or 50 range away, so range doesn't really matter. There's no benefit to the long range photon ECM over the medium to very short range photon, or medium to very short range zealot. 
Also, this one is kind of intangible, but it appears we have low corrosive survival, which means that the corrosive damage dealing zealot can actually just be tuned straight up to be better. You can pump up the missile resistance however high you want to and really make the photon ECM not work just in terms of a pure power play if you wanted to. That's why we tend to see most cycles other than skirmish and garrison switch damage types. Now, jumping half tier forward, we have the Photon ECM target. This one, you want to make sure the Photon ECM works really well in, but the Ravagers half a step above and the Zealot half a step below don't really work too well in. How do we accomplish that? Well, we have things that are spread out, so splash damage is not effective. We have ships that are stunnable, those little guys, dagger tooth ones that are actually mostly underwater. They didn't do any damage to if you had the UV Photon ECM flagship because it had a special stun or a stun ability. Most players didn't really even notice this if you weren't looking for it because they never fired a shot with the right fleet. With the wrong one, above or below, you would have this kind of wreck your ships up. We also have short range turrets which you can outrange using the Photon ECM but not the Zealot which means that the Photon ECM is much better in this target even though it might not even have more armor points it's just a different style. We also again have that intangible aspect of damage type specific survival so you could crank up the penetrative survival however high or however low you wanted but the corrosive survival would always be much higher than that so you can have a low penetrative high corrosive survival and have the photon ECM work really well here. Alright so why am I making this video? Well to answer your question why don't my harbingers work well in the Ronin targets? Well, there's a few different aspects in the, of, of the Harbingers and of the targets we have to consider. The, Harb are the Harbingers, rather, as I should be saying, have no anti-torpedoes, which means the torpedoes in this target kind of wreck them. There aren't any that are built in, and you can't even equip them. We also see the Harbingers have no tactical field resist, which means these ice fields and oil patches are really going to slow down and speed you up, which is something that the Ronin isn't really affected by. You also can't hit moving targets very well because you have concussive Gatling guns which are dumb fire as opposed to torpedoes which are tracking, although this one is kind of iffy because the VXP targets we saw for the Harbingers sort of have really fast ships anyway. Also, the Harbingers have low evade which means the torpedoes, the accuracy based things here, are going to kind of destroy them. So when we're looking at the Harbinger targets, what should we be expecting to see slash what did we see in the VXP weekend? Well, we should actually expect to see land tiles, which torpedoes can't shoot through, but the Gatling guns on the Harbingers can shoot over. We should also expect to see mainly splash damage based things, and no tactical fields, along with probably something special. If you remember back to that missile slide, every single one, or the assault slide, every single one of those different classes had things that worked better or worse than others, and they all had their own special unique ability, which is actually something that makes the game more fun and also happens to slow down power creep, which is interesting. I'm going to go ahead now and use my crystal ball to predict the future. It's kind of cracked, so it might not work very well, but let's see how this goes. The tier 10.5 Siege Hole is probably going to be in the raid, and if I think about it, it's going to be, we haven't even had the August and September skirmish ones. We'll get this in September, use it first in October, which is a few months out. I'm going to try and predict what we're going to see in a few elements. First of all, we should expect a ballistic cannon hull with probably pretty long range as opposed to the Reclaimer, which is a radioactive launcher hull. That one is pretty much a given. We should also expect a ballistic heavy weapon as opposed to a radioactive heavy weapon. Anti-missiles will probably not be useful because they were really useful on the Reclaimers, so we need to put something in the target that means the Reclaimers don't really work great, but that the tier 10.5 Siege Hole does. It might be anti-mortars, it might just be everything in the target cannot be shot down by countermeasures, we'll have to wait and see. Also, I'm not sure on this one is the weakest out of the bunch, but probably a more of a splash damage focus. Reclaimers had a lot of evade, evade worked really well there, so it probably won't be a factor in the next target, because you want to make something that the Reclaimers aren't very strong against, but you can design a hole that is very strong against it. I'm also very sure that the healing aura of the Reclaimers won't benefit anything in this target, so this hole itself won't have a healing aura, so that it isn't, uh, that special element isn't there. Of course, the last thing is we should have something special, some kind of kick, 
you know, the Gladius could take down the fuel silos and blow them up. The Reclaimer can heal friendly turrets and make itself stronger, so we should expect something else like that. What it could be, I have no idea. It could be anything from drones to a massive ore field or whatever else. Alright, well, thank you so much for watching this video. This one was brought to you by the channel members. If you want to learn more about this, click the join button on the YouTube page. And thank you to everyone whose name appears on screen. With that said, this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.